we're going to talk about how you make heads or tails of starting an actual project on your ADU when you've got a million options in front of you and you don't have, it's maybe your first project, you don't have the experience to know what the ABCs are. I've got two real homeowners who are coming on today to talk about how they used Realm, who's also the sponsor of this video, and how Realm helped them get the confidence to sort things out and has moved them along the path. And, and they're doing the fabled garage conversion for under 100K. And we'll talk about whether they're tracking to that or, or not. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show, both of you. Hi. How's it going? Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourselves uh, and, and why you're trying to build an ADU? Sure, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm Julia and this is Alex. Um, we've been married for about a year and a half and we bought a house um, three months into our marriage <laughs> in uh, 2021. Um, and the house that we bought, um, we really liked and it, it made sense for us at the time, um, which is great. Um, and there's a detached garage in the back that we had considered, you know, doing something with eventually it's, um, it's unfinished or it's yeah, just like a regular garage that was built with the house originally. Um, and we, uh, really wanted to turn that space into something a little bit more functional for us. Um, so we decided that we would start looking into the process of, um, converting it into something. Mm -hmm. We weren't really sure what we wanted to do with it, um, at, at first. Yeah, no, I mean, I think Julia is hundred percent on that. Um, I'm Alex. I, I work in tech and I work from home and, uh, I've been working from home since COVID and I switched jobs back in about a year ago in the fall. Um, and our, our garage is is kind of in the state where it's this house is was built in 1926 and there have been um subtle there have been changes to it but for the most part the, the house remained the same but the garage is very of its time um it's very small it doesn't we have two compact cars and they don't really it's not usable for cars so um yeah we decided to see how we can better use the space or take advantage of that and and then started looking into uh, ADU conversions. Yeah, so so uh, tell me, because I talked to a lot of people at different stages and some of them have really clear ideas when they get in. Some of them are like, mm. mm hmm. So you have a garage, you know your garage mm -hmm. and, and it's maybe full of stuff, not cars. <laughs> yeah, it's got stuff, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not guilty as well. Yeah. Uh, and so you've got, you've got a garage, you feel like you're not using it at all. And then you hear about accessory dwelling units. We had heard about them before. Um, mm -hmm. We had known about them for, I don't know, a while. Like I grew up in the Bay Area and it is pretty common here to do an yeah. ADU. <laughs> I had a co I had a coworker at my, the, my previous job that was in the middle of going from installing something new. So not converting something existing, but building onto. Um, yeah, so we'd, we'd heard about them. Um, and actually Alex had initially um, kind of looked into just converting the space into more like a workshop kind of space. Um, yeah. There's like a, there's uh, electrical that runs into it, but it's um, just like a two prong. Um, it's old wiring yeah, yeah. for electrical. Um, so it, um, it wasn't really like a functional space for any sort of workshopping thing. Um, yeah. It's like, sure. it's like basically where the, our big question was like, you know, what are the cost benefits? What are the cost savings on just refinishing it as like a really nice garage or a shop, right? Yeah. Versus like, is it worth like for my my colleague, like, is it worth the process going through the city and going through permitting and going through the ADU thing? Because even with our current project right now, we don't, it, it definitely like has the possibility of being a rental as like a, a something to help uh, drive mm -hmm. some, some revenue or income. But um, for us, as we were looking into it, it was really clear that like in the long run, um, especially for the property value, it, it's a lot, it'll be, it makes a lot more sense to convert it into ADU, like a true, like additional dwelling in-law unit for our, our family and friends that are coming by, especially because, um, we're expecting a baby, uh, in August. Yeah. Oh, that's very exciting. So you guys are doing all of the life-changing things. You've done marriage, new house. Then you're gonna build something new, and you're you're having a baby. All of the, this is this is brave. In two years, yeah. So. Yeah, like, go down. Yeah, very brave. The uh, the okay. So 
it sounds like in the early stages, you're like, it could be a large number of things. We, we need to map out what it would be like as a really nicely decked out garage workshop. Let's map out what it would cost to, to be as an ADU or as a living space and everything in between. And so to make a smart decision about that, you, how did you go about doing the research and getting the information you needed? Yeah, um, I think, you know, there's, there are a lot of um, voices out there about this kind of thing. Um, it's really popular. It makes a lot of sense from so many different angles, right? Like if you have a space and you want to make it better because you use it a lot, like that makes a lot of sense. You know, you invest in, in where you spend time in. I think for us um, to kind of like sift through all of that noise, um, we kind of started with kind of our immediate needs or like why we wanted to do it, right? So our house, the main the main house is a two bedroom, one bathroom. And so it just makes sense to extend that a little bit. Um, and like the way that we're using the garage now, if we hadn't gone started the process, like it would have just been this storage space that wasn't really maximized like yeah, yeah. so with all of that in mind um alex actually did a lot of the heavy lifting and the research and stuff um and then he found realm i think you just googled right and then that's how you found it yeah i was googling around and then i i saw an instagram ad on realm and um i was also so my my colleague too was saying like if you were to do it over again you know he like if you're up for the challenge of managing and project managing that that thing, like totally go for it. You know, nothing's holding you back. But um, I was trying to be realistic with the time that we have and our kind of schedule right now. And I'm also not an expert in it. And I don't want to, for something this large and this kind of uh, intensive, I wanted to look for some help basically. Yeah, so he reached out to Realm and got connected with Amber Lee pretty like early on, yeah. Um, yeah. which was great. And then they had an like initial phone call and Zoom. Um, and then she was awesome and like kind of took all of the things that we had been talking about, whether we would like just convert it into a workshop space or even like we talked about maybe even tearing it down, rebuilding mm -hmm. something else on top of it. And she gave us like all of the options and all of the costs, like um, estimates and then um, like what the added value to our home would be. So that was like a really easy way for us to kind of go through every option and say, okay, does this make sense? Does that make yeah. sense? Um, and then kind of go from there. So that was kind of the, that's really when we got started in terms of the process. Yeah, I mean, that that first like introductory call and in talking to someone in the industry was uh, kind of, was really key for us to validate this kind of idea to kind of level set with um, like what to expect or what, kind of the actual reasons are from someone who spends a lot of time doing this. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, so that's helpful. So your early stages still, you're weighing all these different options and, right. yeah. and you found Realm pretty early in the process and they were like, oh, this is how much this option would cost and what you get. This is how much this one would cost what you get. That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. basically. And like, what's that actually look like? So you, you get an ad. That's I like I like it when good when there's okay. good relevant ads. But you you come through through from Instagram and like you're already talking to a human, or you start with an address input, or like how does that actually work? Like yeah, a so lot of people have never used Realm, haven't seen their website yet. So like, what's that look like? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So in my case, I was like looking for it, right? So I was actively like. I was fielding out the market for a, a project manager, an expert in this field. And so I got the ad, I went to the website, I took a look at kind of what their, what they offered in their projects. And, you know, it was, it, it was enough for me to be interested to talk for, for um, under half an hour and it was all free. And I, I signed up on their website really simply and basically said like, Hey, this is, this is my idea, or these are the questions that I have. And then, in our introductory call, we just talked over that. Cool. And then, and then what happens next? Yeah. So um, it's kind of actually how we arrived at the ADU thing and not doing a, a finished garage because um, Amberly uh, from Realm was really, was really open to kind of our ideas on this. Like she wasn't like, and I appreciate this about, about Realm that they're like very, um, they accommodate to kind of what you're interested or what you look at right now, right? So at the time it was like, do I do ADU or refinish garage? And I said, well, you're definitely, it's gonna, 
you know, you're concerned about timeline and price. Like that's, that's our thing that's on our mind right now. Um, this is what that looks like for both things. This is the pros and cons. If you're also valuing home, home value, oh, in the long run, like this extra whatever gap that is, is actually worth it. Um, so after that conversation, you know, we weighed out options, like we had the choice to go with the realm or not after that. And um, it was it was two things were clear, like, well, ADU makes a lot of sense. And, you know, if this 30 minute call with realm with, with experts, like it turns out to be like this, like, it, it would only be beneficial for us to have a partner like that in this project. Yeah. So, because at the same time you talked about it, you're like time strapped. You've got several large projects on the horizon, including yeah. a whole human, and <laughs> um, and you're trying to figure all that stuff out. So, finding a project manager is really key to to making the whole thing work. And what's that look like? What's what what does their project management service feel like? Or what do you have to do? You have to pay as soon as you're done with that first call, or is there like a baby step? What what goes on? Yeah. yeah, so um, I don't remember like exactly the step by step timelines. Maybe you can help me with this too. Mm -hmm. But basically, we like had those initial calls, and then I think that's when she sent us the the document that was like the really just like a yeah, table right. of different yeah, like right. options. Um, and then we decided whether or not we would go forward with the project or not. Um, another thing I really appreciated about Realm was that um, she was just like, the timeline is whatever you want it to be. So we could start this like tomorrow, we could start it in two years, like whatever it makes sense for you guys, um, which kind of gave us the flexibility to like kind of not feel like we were jumping in immediately to something that we had to do, um, which was really helpful. Um, so we, when we decided to go ahead with them, we paid a deposit of $250. Um, that was going towards like the overall cost of the project. Um, and then since then, she's been like our Amberly has been our main um, contact for everything in the process, like just talking to us about. Um, yeah, she found she found the architect for us. Yeah, she found the architect for us. She found the contractors for us, like to give us different options. She's helped us with the permitting process. She's even helped us a little bit with financing. Um, so she really just has um, taken over like a lot of the the stressful part of the job of trying to figure out how to do an ADU and like just been a really great advocate for us and helping us with um, kind of navigating these things that we don't really know anything about. Nice. And so um, when you got the original budget for, for like what it would look like, uh, what was the budget for, for an ADU conversion? What were you looking at? Yeah. yeah. So the one that we ended up going with um, was um, keeping the structure remaining, mm -hmm. uh, but it would be uh, basically a studio uh, with a one bedroom, a full, or oh my gosh, a full bathroom. Um, so a studio with a bathroom um, and then like a small kitchenette kind of space with it. Um, and that the estimate for that was between 70 and $90,000. Cool. So you had like a table and it was like, if you use the existing structure, you'll be limited to your space and what you could do, but it's 70 to 90 grand probably. And if yeah. you have to tear down and replace, you can do anything, but this is going to cost this much. a lot more yeah significantly well, more yeah and like it, this was also really helpful from a <laughs> friendly architect he was like well per the age of your property your house and the city guidelines like you technically can't expand so that that's one constraint that really narrows down our options and our focus which is great um and then given that like we don't intend on like renting it out right um and it's really uh, purpose built for our, like our needs like we opted in for like not having we have plugins ready for uh, laundry but we're not installing any laundry because like that's not it doesn't fit with our needs our bed situation is we're building in um, murphy a murphy bed right because it's a small space so um you know our budget because we we factored in like our current mortgage payment and kind of like our band for that right and you know we're not looking to like we said before these were our goals you know our budget was about this like our minimum and maximum we were really set i think it was helpful to set like the band rather than a hard number because it gives a flexibility um and then you know that we got that like that aligned with our architect really well and in, in those needs and then as we started getting closer to actually choosing um, contractors, like we were um, that we were committed to that 
that price band and given our, our project type, like we were able to understand and we kind of see like what things that we can really put money in or what what things like like uh if timeline is an issue because of covid and supply chain like we're not going to opt into anything custom for windows or doors right so what are things that we can what are opportunities there like going to um home depot or lowe's but cool yeah yeah <laughs> I, yeah <laughs> That's it's a, super important. These are the yeah. these are the decisions, right? And as you're tracking through, it's like, oh my god, there's so much to pick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you've got you've got the the table. You pick out. We're going to do an existing conversion. This is about the cost of construction, seventy to ninety. Does it have like cost of the designs, cost of permitting, stuff like that? The seventy to ninety was supposed to be for the entire project. All in. All in. Um, we are at a point where we're past the ninety thousand. We're about at a hundred thousand, um, just because of when the estimate was given to us. The world was different, and now the world has changed, and there's lots of issues with all the things that are going on with the economy. So it's higher than we had anticipated. But um, the market value for homes is also a lot higher, especially for things like ADU. So it it doesn't really matter in terms of like the cost, I mean, as long as we're able to pay for it, we're comfortable with, with kind of where we've ended up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, and to add to that too, like Realm was, it really was very upfront with like how Realm benefits from it, right? So they, it was very clear that like they don't, they have no interest in take it, taking advantage of anyone. Um, they want like us, us being happy with the quality of work or our project is like a win for them too. Like, like if we win, they win as well. And um you know, the care about the timeline and our expectations was really, um, we really appreciated that. And like, you know, someone like with, with Amberly, like we didn't feel, uh, we well, let me put it another way. Like we felt like we could ask like any question or any kind of, any stream of communication would come up. And if we needed clarity on something, we could always ask for clarity. If something came up from maybe like the city, I have no, I feel no pressure. Julia feels no pressure of asking me really like, Hey, like, do you know how to answer to this? Or can you help me with this? You know, because I think, I think that's very, it's, it's very helpful to have the, the internet and, and community sites and forums, like give you opinions on things. Um, but, you know, there's only so far that you can go until you have to realize that like every home is different, every situation is different. And having someone like Amberly and Realm has been huge to kind of like alleviate all the learning process and rely on someone who's just, who, who does it, you know, full time. Cool. So like, uh, how, how much time do you spend thinking about the ADU Mm -hmm. every, every week now versus somebody else is handling it? Um, it, there's been definitely like ups and downs of the process, like um, in a lot of like, we, because the timeline is our own, we, um, you know, didn't have, we didn't feel a sense of urgency before I got pregnant. Um, and then once we did get pregnant, it was like, oh my gosh, we need to get this done like by <laughs> the time that the baby comes. <laughs> Cause it's supposed to be our like office slash um, like guest space for people who yeah. are going to come visit. Um, and the second bedroom will be the nursery. So it became very urgent. And once it became very urgent, we'd already gone through the steps of, I think we even had the architect we, by that we, point. Yeah, we had the, so we had signed with Realm. We were, if we hadn't had the architect or the first visit already, that was already in line. Yeah. But that was before the new year. So by the time the new year came, we found out that we were pregnant at, the, at around Christmas time, end of December time. So we really like had to shift years going in. Um, yeah. So there were definitely yeah. some weeks where we were a lot more proactive with like, you know, following with emails with Amberly and also with the architect at the time, and then um, having to file for the permits and get kind of getting our, our HELOC set out too. Um, and now we're at the point where we're just about to start like the, hopefully the building process once the permitting comes through. So it's been a little bit chiller because everything, all those big steps of finding, you know, finding the architect and financing the project and all of that stuff and getting contractor, which was a big thing. That was, um, that was a little more like work that we had to do, but also Amberly was doing a lot of that for us and kind of just giving us like, Hey, this is what I think. Like we can get on the phone and talk about it. Like 
I scheduled this call for you to talk to this person. So we didn't have to do a lot of the logistical work. It was a lot of just like making decisions and following up with emails. Yeah. Similar. I mean, I would relate it really similar to like our, I mean, this, where we are right now is our first home. We're first home buyers and getting an agent and having an expert kind of be there for, because you, you can only hear and understand so much until you experience it, right, for the first time. And uh, like our home buying experience, like with this experience, like, um, you know, one can only describe the, the process of like applying for a permit to your local city for the first time, right? And like, I think with Amberly and, and, the, and with Realm, we've been able to do things in the right order so that when they happen, they happen as smooth, smooth as they can be. Right, because we're working with the architect and working with contractors to have all these things in place, so that, like, it's not like we're relying on Realm to do everything for us, right? Like, they're doing a lot and they're helping us, but at the same time, like, it's still our own timeline, it's still our own project. Like, we are there. People are ready to respond to like the decisions that, like, we're making, which is great. Cool. Yeah. So it sounds kind of like a personal assistant project manager relationship where when you're in a, when you're in a hurry, they're, they're there <laughs> when you're, yeah, but yeah, when you're working yeah. on something. Yeah. I mean, it's even beyond like the assistant side because it's like we, they're really helping us navigate the day to day and like actualizing this vision. Right. Cause like n- neither of us work in like home renovation or building. So we have like ideas and we have experiences of these things, but we don't actually do it. And we, and to the level that like a contractor or realm does like, you know, so that's been, it's been helpful. And when we don't know things, but it's also been really helpful and validating um, when it's like our ideas are aligning with, um, with Amberly and the team. Can you, can you dive into that? So like you, you've got some ideas for how to convert it. You've decided let's do it as a project. Let's, let's do it as an ADU that feels like a one bedroom, one bath or whatever. And then like, how do you then take that to the next step? You just go, you know, figure it out, Amberly, or, or uh, how, how did you find a designer? How did you do all that stuff? Yeah. So initially they, um, Realm had their, well, so Amberly came to see the space um, initially with a couple of different contractor type people that was super early on just to kind of get a feel for the space yeah, and like see ins- it for inspections, herself. Inspections, like quality inspections. Yeah, just to like see if there were foundational issues or if it just looked like we definitely had to tear it down or that kind of thing. Um, and then based on the measurements that they got from that and just the initial kind of like looking at it, um, the realm designer came up with a few different designs um, that we kind of just to give us an idea of looking into it and you know kind of what it would look like. Um, and then once we got to the point where it was a little bit more like urgent, a little more serious, um, Amber Lee was like, she reached out to us and she she was saying, um, you know, I really recommend that we go with an architect. The space is pretty straightforward, but they would just have a really good idea. And there was this great architect that I know. And, you know, would you, are you guys, do you want to meet with him? And um, so she set us up with an initial call with him. And then he came and did a, a site visit himself and sketched up designs um, based on what he saw and kind of our own input. Um, and then that's what we used to apply for the permit uh, to the city. Um, so that was earlier, that was like in January, February time. Um, so just a couple of months ago. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was really big too, because the, I mean, it, it's a compliment to Realm and Amberly. Like there are, I mean, there are many architects in the area, but this architect is someone that they worked with before and in the firm that he's with, like specializes in projects and residential projects like this. So there was a level of like understanding and comfort that was already implied, right? There was no um, explaining from us really that needed to happen um, beyond what was already, what we know about kind of our our kind of project. Yeah. And so you're trekking forward, you've gotten plans done. Mm -hmm. You've submitted for permits. Yeah. Yeah. And and you're waiting at that point or are you already looking at builders or uh, what stage are you at now? 
Yeah, we, we, um, because we, again, we wanted to be really proactive in this whole process. We decided to go forward and look for contractors while the permitting was still happening. So once we got the designs from the architect, we submitted them to the city and then Amberly was super on it with finding contractor options for us um, to be the actual ones who were going to build, build it out. Um, so we were able to choose interview and choose and have some site visits with a few different, um, uh, project or companies yeah contractor businesses um and they you know sent over their quotes to amberly and she sent them to meet to, to us we were able to talk through them and then um, choose one based on her recommendation and what they were saying that their timeline was and all the different things that they had kind of um, planned for in the in the quote um so we're at the point now where we have a contractor who's ready to go once once we are and once the permitting is is fully full um you know fully passed um, which should be any day now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, yeah, things are by the nature of the project, like some things aren't perfectly aligning, but everyone that's involved is on the same page. Yeah, and and um, when, so two questions. One is what's what's the, uh, what's the process kind of like when, when you go to compare bids from multiple build, builders? Is it really obvious or does somebody walk you through that? Are all the bids apples to apples or is there like weird comparisons? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, we, there, they are very similar in terms of kind of what they all are generally promising, but the price or their quotes like varied actually pretty greatly between a few that we looked at. Um, and so Amberly was there to walk us through, you know, all the different things that we had questions about after reading through the quotes and, um, you know, we even help us with understanding some of the language in the quotes and getting some of that stuff changed that didn't really fit with what we were envisioning, um, which was great. So it was definitely, we could not go into that blind, <laughs> uh, if we had not yeah. had her support, that's, you know, it would have really, yeah. kind of, really been really, really, confusing. really huge. Yeah. yeah. Um, so once we, and really ultimately it came down to, um, price and then her, honestly her recommendation um you know and there's just a million horror stories out there of bad contractors um and we didn't that was really the for me that was a huge reason why i wanted to go with um project manager in general and, and realm specifically is because i wanted to have that yeah. kind of taken away from us or taking that, that burden <laughs> off <laughs> um and so you know her recommendation of i've worked with these people before and they're really great and um, you know all of these great things about them and uh, that was really important for us in terms of actually you know, deciding to go with this particular contractor. Very cool. And then the, the other piece is like, okay, so you, you've alluded to things aren't aligning. We're a little over budget, but we understand why. Everybody's dying to know. Everybody's on the edge of their seat. Like, give us an example of like, what what does not aligning mean? Like, what, what's gone over and why? And, and why are you okay with it? Like, get us there. <laughs> yeah, so... I guess from the very beginning, we started looking. The, this whole this whole story starts around the fall of last year, like right? September, November, October, that area. And from let's say September all the way up until uh, we just went into May, so let's say April, right? Um, well, interest rates and everything have like have increased. Like the world has changed quite a bit on financially. Mm -hmm. um, and the 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 challenge of supply chain with COVID um, is still is still present, right? And it's really impacting um, really this construction arena, especially for, for more folks that have jobs that are committing to staying at work at home. Um, people like us that have homes that have opportunities like this detached garage are really interested. So all these kind of things are converging um, and because of that, like things get a little more expensive and timeline gets a little stretched out. Um, yeah, the three things that we really needed to align were um, the contractor start date, the permitting end date, and then our, our HELOC or our second mortgage um, beginning date as well, um, which are all three completely different entities. <laughs> yeah. uh, so um, trying to time all those perfectly has been a little bit stressful uh, just because it's a matter of you know, kind of throwing our hands up or throwing the papers up and saying, this is what it needs yeah. to happen and when it needs to happen. And hopefully it does when it does. Um, so we're at the point now where um, the, the financing is, is good and we'll have that um, accessible uh, and the, um, 
the contractor is ready to go when we when we are it's just we're waiting for the permitting um which uh, i have heard also horror stories about that but so far our experience has been okay um and since we don't um since everyone knows that that's kind of the thing that we're waiting on um you know everyone's a little bit more flexible in terms of like what we're kind of expecting in the next couple of weeks as well cool. yeah all right uh a couple of wrap-up questions and i'll let you guys run away the so the um, if you hadn't used Realm, how do you think you would have gone about doing this project? I don't know if we would have, <laughs> to be completely I honest think. with you. <laughs> um, I think yeah. because it, they just made it so, uh, it made it so clear how to go about the process of doing it. Um, I don't know if we would have had the, the confidence or the like, interest really to get it done when um, in the same time frame but having the freedom and the flexibility to like sit down and talk with Amberly or just realm in general about like what we were expecting and then having all those options laid out um, was huge for us uh, because that really yeah. gave us that like breathing space like okay is this even something we can do if it is what is it going to look like um you know does it make sense for us to do it and then having all those answers to those questions being yes on every step of the road was really you know really huge for us and i don't think we would have done it at least not at this timeline we wouldn't have done it in the same way mm -hmm. yeah no i mean i i would echo that 100 percent. i think um i would 10 out of 10 recommend someone like realm i would recommend realm and and their expertise and their kind of like ability to work within the bounds of our needs and our life right now you know like like i had mentioned earlier like we started talking to them in september and we didn't find out that we were expecting until the end of december and things changed and amberly and, and the realm team were there right on top of it to like accommodate and make this project possible within a timeline that like works really well for us you know all things considered like that all of this it's been so worth it to be with a team like realm all right i like it i, I hope i get to follow up with you guys a few months from now find out everything's yeah. scooting Please along yeah. yeah come out and see it for sure for yeah. sure I love it. I love it. Uh, and and it's it's uh, it's very exciting. Thank you for sharing your experience. It's very helpful to other people who are out there trying to figure out they're in the same steps as you. And there, a lot of people are like, I don't even know. Yeah, there's we have so, the wherewithal to do so, this. There's so much out there, but I think someone like Realm like helps you clarify that. Cool. You know those questions. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Thank yeah. you so much for coming on the show. And it's, it's been a real pleasure talking to both of you and sharing your experience and congratulations. And I can't wait to see the space finish one day. Well, yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thanks again to Realm for sponsoring the video. There's links in the description below. They're affiliate links. So if you use Realm and pay for it, I'll be rewarded. And hopefully it helps you develop your journey and, and get closer to your ADU. And, and it helps me continue to run this channel. So a huge thanks. And if you're interested in sponsoring a video for your own ADU business, uh, just get in touch. We love doing these customer interviews. And you can watch more interviews just like this one by following this playlist.